Well, hey there, everyone. So, in all of my time of doing this, it has occurred to me that I have yet to make a vampire outfit. So, since it's the season of Halloween, um, I'm gonna be doing that. So, I was trying to think of ideas of which direction I could go with this costume because there's like a million you could go like old Victorian, you could go smashy, you could go like a billion different ways. And so while I was perusing Pinterest, I happened upon a couple of red dresses and that kind of sparked inspiration for this look. So I don't quite know what it's gonna look like yet, but my main vision is it's gonna be like a nice like red like elegant dress and then maybe like a big red cloak because they need some sun protection. So I did go to Goodwill and basically so this is one of the things I picked up was this like set here because I really liked this trim on the bottom um so I kind of need to open this up and see how much of this I can I have and that is going to influence how the rest of this look is going to go but dress aside I did pick up this massive curtain um which is perfect cloak material so i'm gonna make this into a massive cloak that's gonna go on the outside of this dress and then i need to open this up and then i also picked i picked this up um it's just a pretty red just in case i need it for something i'm hoping i have enough of this to make something so since this is like a more since i'm like kind of limited in my material there were two of these but i don't picked up one my bad um i'm kind of limited with material here so i'm thinking this will be a bit of a slimmer dress like less of like a big poofy ball gown and more of like a nice elegant dinner dress kind of look so i'm going to tear this open and see what i can get from this and then from there i think i will decide what i want the rest of it to look like so basically i'm hoping that this bottom skirt here since it's a three piece i'm hoping that this bottom skirt here is enough to make a bottom skirt um and then i'll have enough left over to do the top um and then from there i'll see what kind of top that i want i'm kind of feeling like an off the shoulder kind of top with this look um but we'll see what we've got from this first okay let's tear this open and see what we are dealing with. Not as much as I was hoping for. Oh. Fair, I've been misled. Okay, this is not a lot of material here. Um, so let's see what we've got with this. Okay, here's my thoughts. So, the pieces of, sorry, the pieces of the three-piece set were not as big as I was hoping they would be. Um, so I'm kind of in a pinch here. I think my main working piece I've got is this curtain then. So I think what I might do is do a more like, I'm just gonna throw up an example around here. Um, basically just kind of like a slimmer dress and then maybe like a high slit um i don't have that much material to work with here um but with this trim if i have enough maybe i will take it off of this sheet here and use it around either like the top or bottom of this dress maybe that can work maybe if i don't have like enough length out of this then i can definitely lengthen it with this kind of trim okay i'm gonna go look through some patterns and see what i can manage um all i know is i think i will definitely have plenty of hopefully material for this to make a big cloak 
So this is solid. Um, I don't think I want to use this for the dress just because it's such perfect cloak material. So I think I'm going to leave this alone. Okay, I'm going to go search some things <laughs> and then see what I can come up with for a pattern. Alright, I'm going to be so fur with you guys. Um, I <laughs> looked at a pattern for a skirt and it was like a hundred pages to print out or something like that so I uh, wasn't gonna do that so instead I just created my own pattern um, and it looks like this because I've sprayed it so that it will lay flat and not curl so when it dries it'll dry flat um, so yeah so I've made my own circly skirtish pattern um, and hopefully I will have enough material to cut out the skirt so I ended up having just enough of that curtain to cut out four panels of the skirt and then the outer fabric of the bodice and then I just used the lace curtain to do the lining of the bodice. Okay, so upon further inspection of the material, I have decided to make my own pattern for this. So I was looking at a few patterns, um, but they would be like forever to tape together. Um, and I just really didn't feel like doing that this week. So I basically, the structure of this dress is gonna be a bit more simpler than I originally planned, but that's okay. Cause I think I'm gonna spruce it up with some things that I have laying around. Um, so the construction of the dress is it's going to be like a, a floor length circle skirt, um, like, like pretty slim. And then I'm going to have a big slit in the front for my leg to pop out. And then for the top, and at least right now, instead of having it be an over the shoulder or, um, like off the shoulder thing, I'm going to have it just be a simple, like tight spaghetti strapped top, um, with like a little sweetheart neckline. So that's going to be the t dress so far. Um, and I do still have like lace and stuff that I can like make this look a little bit better. But given that I had such limited material, that really constricted what I could do with this dress. Um, that's the joys of using curtains from Goodwill. But I think the material is really pretty. So I think this will turn out with the vision that I want. And then the more I add to it, the better it'll get along with the cloak that I'm gonna make. So this will be a vampire-y look, hopefully. So for the bodice, I did end up using um, way back when, when I did the Anna dress and I did construct that top. So I just used that top basically, but I did redraft the front to make the V dip a little bit lower. Um, besides that, it's not gonna have a corset back. I'm going to put a zipper in it. Um, so the zipper is gonna stretch from the bottom of the corset or the of the bodice to just the top of the skirt so I could get it on easily. Um, so yeah, and I only had enough material to cut out the outer fabric in that curtain, which is fine, that's all I need. And then the lining for the top, I cut out of the laced um, material. So, but we're not gonna see that, it's not gonna matter. So we had just enough of that material to make the bare bones of this dress. So I'm probably going to do the skirt first, so I just have to sew all of these four panels together. Um, and then for when I'm sewing the back together, I'm going to leave just a little bit of a space so that I can fit the zipper in. And then for the slit, I've decided I'm just going to likely cut one of the panels like fully in half and then sew it down just a little bit and then just like encase the seams for that slit there. Um, so that's going to be something I'll do after I've got everything sewn together. Um, and then I can work on the top, which is also a pretty simple construction. So let's go ahead and get to it. So the first thing that we're going to do to sew this all together is to pin all of the panels right sides together and sew them all together. Thank you. 
Then I'm going to get out my peaking shears and pink the edges of this because I did not feel like serging them. Now to do the slit, so I am going to fold this in half for one of the panels and then just cut it straight down. And then I will place the right sides together and sew down just a little bit. And then once I sew it, I will stop that sew at the top and then I will do a rolled hem on both of the openings of the slit and this will be encased. Now for the bodice, so for both the lining and the outer fabric, you're just going to pin all of these pieces together and sew them all together. Once both the outer fabric and the lining are all sewn together and ironed, you can place them right sides together and sew all the way around except for the bottom, then you can clip the corners and turn it right sides out and iron it. Now this can be added to the skirt, so right sides together, I'm going to pin starting from the middle because I know that there's going to be excess on the edges of the bodice. So I will start pinning from the middle and then pin it all the way around and there will be a little excess hanging off. Now it's time for the zipper, so you do see that I have quite a bit of the bodice of the edge to cut off. So I'm just going to line it up with the edge of the skirt and then right sides together I'm going to sew the zipper down and then I will end up taking my pinking shears and trimming the edge of that bodice to meet the skirt. And then after the zipper is sewn and the bodice is added to the skirt, I am going to add a bias tape to the meeting of the bodice and the skirt to encase all of the exposed seams. Now it's time for the straps. I'm just going to cut out a pretty thin rectangle and you're just going to place that right sides together and sew it down. Then you will turn it right sides out, iron it, and then just attach it to the front and the back of the bodice. Okay, so I've got the base of the dress done here. Um, the last thing that I really need to do is to hem it um, and then maybe add some decorations and whatnot, but that's where I'm going to leave it today. It actually surprisingly looks really good, um, which I was not expecting it to. So this is going swimmingly. So tomorrow I'm going to come back and finish this up and then hopefully either tomorrow or the next day I can do the cloak. So, let's go ahead and go to tomorrow. It is now day two, and the only thing that I'm going to do today is to finish up this hem. So, to hem the circle skirt, what I'm going to do is I'm going to iron it up just one fold, and then sew really close to the edge. Then from there, I can cut the excess material, and then go back to the machine, and then just fold it over that little last edge, and sew it down, and that encases the exposed seam. Okay, so it's day three. So yesterday all I did was hem the dress and that was kind of it for the day. Um, so I think I'm not gonna add anything else to the dress just because I like it 
as it is like i want to be able to wear it for like other occasions but i think it still gets across the like vampire look especially if i do like a makeup look with it so today today i have to make the cloak and then also I got my vampire teeth in, so I need to fit those to my teeth. And then we will be probably all done. Um, I don't think I'll show the makeup transition for this. I have a feeling I'm gonna do like a smoky eye, maybe a little blood drip, and then maybe like a vampire bite. So it's not really much to show. Also, I feel like the video is gonna be a little too long if I do that. So for now, let's get these bad boys fitted and then we can move on to the cloak. Okay, so it looks like, here's all my toofies. Um, so it looks like what I'm supposed to do is take like five of these pellets here um, and then put them into some boiling water, which I am boiling right now. And then once those like melt, then I put it onto the tooth and then I place it on my tooth um, and I'm supposed to keep it there for five to 10 minutes. So, once my water's done boiling, I can add some of these to it and get that process started. Okay, let's add my water. Okay, I'm gonna place these on a spoon because I feel like I will lose them. Other, I should get my tooth ready, actually. I'm gonna do the 13s, um, the smallest ones, because I was kind of playing around with them yesterday and these ones look the best on my teeth. Okay, I feel like these are ready, so now I'm going to mush them onto the tooth, and then mush it on... I feel these aren't ready. Whatever. Okay, now I'm going to mush it onto my tooth. Are these hot? <laughs> okay, now I'm supposed to key like this. <laughs> Let's do the other one. And throw that over in there. <sighs> okay. Now, <laughs> I have to keep these on for like 5 to 10 minutes. And I'm supposed to keep them, supposed to keep them dry, so I'm just going to smile for like 5 minutes. I feel like these will, these will stay fairly well. <laughs> okay, um, I will meet you back in like five minutes. <laughs> nah. <laughs> okay, I have my little teeth done. I have to get a little used to wearing these. <laughs> but I think they're fitting pretty well. I tried to trim this one up a bit and it, I found that it's not staying in as well as the one that I didn't trim up. So I'm just not gonna trim up this one. So, there's the toofies. <laughs> I feel like they look pretty good. Um, a little bulky, but um, I think that's fine. This is the smallest one they had on the pack. Okay, so now the teeth are done. The dress is done. It is time to finally do the cloak. Um, let me grab that pattern that I'm gonna use. Okay, so for the cloak, I'm gonna be using this simplicity pattern. Um, probably this one here. Yeah, this one here, see? Which looks like this one here. So this is a pretty basic cloak pattern, I feel. Now the one thing that I feel like I'm going to struggle with is the hood. So since this is not like a very stiff material, I feel like my hood's just gonna like go womp. So I think maybe I'm gonna try and put like a very thin wire like within the hood or something to like stabilize it so it sits better and not just go wow okay so i have to pull this pattern out and i'm going to go ahead and hopefully see if i have enough material to do so all right let's get this cloak going now for the cloak i had just enough material to do everything that i needed so i just cut out two panels each of the front of the cloak and the back of the cloak God, it's like a murder of teddy bear in here. Oh, the horror. Then the back of the cloak gets placed right sides together and sewn. So. 
and I do do a serging stitch for the edge of this cloak as well. And then from there you can take the two front panels of the cloak and place them right sides together onto the back panels and then sew it down and serge it. After that it was time to focus on the hood of the cloak. So for my lining I just used this black satin and I just cut out the same pattern for the outside of the cloak. Now I was debating what I should do to stabilize this hood. Um, and I was debating a wire, so instead of a wire, I went with interfacing. So I cut out four pieces of interfacing and remember to reverse it for the other two because it is the other side of the front of the hood. And then these get ironed onto the edges of the inside of both of the pieces. Once that's done, you can place the hoods right sides together and sew up along that curve. Then once they are both ironed, you can place them inside each other, right sides together, and you're going to sew along that interfacing and then turn it right sides out. Once I've ironed the piece, I'm going to do a top stitching just around the edge of the hood. Before I can sew the hood on, I forgot that I needed to hem the sides of the cloak, so I just did a really small hem on both the side openings. Then the hood can be placed right sides together on this cloak and sewn. And I also went ahead and added a bias tape along the inside to hide the exposed edges. Then for the ties, I did the same thing as the spaghetti strap, where I'm going to cut out a rectangle, sew it right sides together, turn it right sides out, and then just tack it right onto the inside of the cloak, and we are ready for the final look.
Do you know how hard it is to tastefully show vampire tooth teeth without just going, her her her? She knows. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I think as a whole look, this turned out pretty good, a good version of a vampire. I love the elements separately. Um, this dress alone, I didn't want to touch it anymore with like decorations or anything just because I think it was such a pretty dress on its own. It was such a pretty dress on its own and I would like to wear this like other places. It's fancier than most places I would go but for like if I was going to a wedding or something I think this would be a great dress so I didn't want to touch it anymore. And then the cloak turned out really good. I got really lucky finding this curtain because I had just enough fabric to do exactly what I needed to do for this cloak. Um, it's incredible. I think we should always wear cloaks. I think that should come back into fashion. It just feels like you're wearing like a blanket the whole time and then you could just have a hood. Honestly, why did it go out of fashion? But yeah, so that's my red little vampire look that I got going on. Oh, 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 she's got me. Oh, please don't eat my gloves. They were only like $3, please. Thank you. I'll say now how hard it is to not get red lipstick on my teeth and then on vampire teeth. It's really hard. But yeah, I think I'm very happy with this look. I'm glad that I finally got to do a vampire look. Um, I don't know why I haven't done it before. I literally just like did not think of it, I guess. Um, and then I was perusing some videos on TikTok and somebody was talking about vampire teeth. So I was like, oh, I haven't done that before. Oh, and I'm so sweaty because it's like, it's cooling down, though it is still like 80 degrees. So I am quite sweaty, especially with a cloak on. Although as soon as it gets cold, I might bust this baby out. It's really comfortable. Also, cold run fair day edition. Oh yeah, I forgot I had these. Um, I think this is a nice little edition. Um, just like a really quick special effects thing that I did. Um, just like a little latex and then some fake blood. So <laughs> I think that's a nice addition. I keep like looking in the mirror and going, oh, oh, and I'm like, oh yeah, I put that there. Um, <laughs> but I think it, it sells the look too, makes it look a little bit more costumey and less like I'm just going out to a very nice dinner and more like I'm going to a vampire masquerade ball. So, anywho to do, if you like what I did, go and like and subscribe. I post most Saturdays, mostly at noon, and I will see you in my next video. Thank you for watching!